So this is the world record jump of 47 inches, which I will break with my super jump shoes that I'm building for my friend. Yahoo! I've already broken the running world record with my super speed shoes, and I'm the first, second person to ever walk on water. So I think jumping's the next step. <laughs> but if you have any other super shoe ideas or crazy projects I could make, let me know down below. Let's first see how far off I am. Like, who knows? I might be close to the record already. I need to be about here. <laughs> oh, is that it? <sighs> he, how did he f flip? All right. We might have some work to do. The first jump shoe mechanism that everybody thinks of, springs, which actually already exist. You know, something like these moon shoes. Just put your foot on top, and they have these elastic spring bands around the side that basically turn your feet into mini trampolines. Oh, this is horrible. Ow, ow, ow. For the record. Oh. So close. Was that close? No. Okay. All right, that was awful. What else we got? These have a stronger spring and a slightly different design. Let's see how high we can go. Under two. Under two? Oh, get me out of these things. Take them off. Mario, I think the best commercial jump shoes that I was able to find are these kangaroo stilts. As you see, they have a much bigger spring in the back, which they harvest from kangaroos. It makes you feel like you're jumping super high, but it's also because they add an extra foot to your height already. Oh, that's so sketch. So we're trying to break the vertical jump record, basically measuring to the bottom of my feet with my legs straight. That way we're getting the true jumping height and my flexibility isn't a factor. It's, it's better this way. The problem with all of these spring shoes is you have to compress the springs with your own power. So it's impossible to generate enough force to make any significant difference to your jump. Like eventually if the springs are good enough, you can build up enough energy to jump high, like how you do on a trampoline. But I want an instant jump, like you're flat on the ground, then boom, four feet up. For that, we need to provide enough upwards force over a long enough time to get me 47 inches up before gravity slows me down and I fall back. This is called impulse. And we need to do all of this in a very clever and safe way. So this is a rocket. And those are 12 more rockets. Fun fact, they're actually the most powerful rockets you can get without needing a license. Each one puts out about 30 pounds of thrust. So in theory, six of these should be able to make me weightless for a second, and I should be able to jump much higher. Gonna run a little test real quick first with our volunteer, see if this will even work. Three, two, one. Wow, that went pretty high. <laughs> I think that was a, was that a success? Is that what we wanted? Know. He went pretty high. It broke the record. It, it broke the record. <sighs> hmm. This might not be it. Bunch of fiery explosive rockets strapped to my body. Seems like it's dangerous. Cheating against the rules. Like I might as well just put on my Iron Man suit and claim I can jump infinite feet. We've done that and it's super cool. But for this video, a jump is more like a push off a surface. So I think we gotta start over again in a safe way. So this is an airbag I uh, just borrowed from my friend. From my friend. And it's one of the safest things humans have ever created. In the event of a crash, it gently expands to cushion the driver. So my thought is we take the airbag and put it on some boots facing down. Then as it expands, it should give us the force we need to gently be pushed into the air. And bonus, we'll already have pillows on our feet to cushion our landing. Like, I can't think of a better, safer idea. First step though, we gotta see how many airbags it takes to lift a person. Let's start with 10. Yeah, let's see what happens. Three, two, one. Oh, Jesus Christ! Oh, oh. Tesla, bro! <laughs> huh. I think we may have overdone it. He went so high. And in oh. <laughs> Luigi, Dude, Luigi bad. just taking the dive. Oh, oh, and he landed on the head. I don't think that was a, a success. You do not feel very safe to me. I think they would work technically though. Like, <laughs> yeah. it would work. We would probably beat the record. 
He actually did better than the Rockets. Like only his foot's gone. Forso is a little. He landed on his head, brother. He, that he took a crazy dive. A crazy that's, dive. Which is so funny because that's actually what Luigi does. <laughs> like he actually like. Oh. I gotta write this down. Uh, this isn't even a clipboard. This is a cautious discus throwing sign. Heads up. Heads up. As it turns out, just one airbag is probably enough to lift a person. I think it was actually a thing like 10 years ago to popcorn someone as a prank. Basically stick an airbag under someone and set it off. <laughs> Results may vary. Airbags actually use a powdered charge to generate gas and expand the sack very quickly. So to make a car crash safer, you actually add explosives. But as much fun as this looks, I think it's pretty clear, don't do any of this. Nothing about this video you should try. Sure, it might be possible to jump super high with airbags or rockets, but it would take a ton of work to make it even remotely safe, because it's basically all or nothing, which means we can't slowly work up to a big jump to see if my legs could even take it. So this is a pneumatic piston. Basically, when you put air in this end, it forces the piston out. Best part is you can change the air pressure to actually control the power. So more pressure, more force, the higher the jump. Also lifting and eating right to try and get even more jump. Fuel's actually been great for this. It makes nutrition super easy with these hot and savory balanced plant-based meals. It's been super convenient to have while building this stuff too. Like I'm quite possibly the worst cook you could imagine. My specialty dish, microwaved eggs. You, you like microwaved eggs, right Ryan? <laughs> Everyone loves them. No, with this, even I can't mess it up. All you gotta do, grab a couple scoops. One, two. Then just add a cup of hot water. It actually looks really good. And all you gotta do is just cover it, let it sit for five minutes. I don't even need to leave the workshop. It is good. It is really good. So I've been working on mounting these pistons on either side of a boot. But I get so locked in building, I just forget to eat. Then when I realize I'm hungry, I want something instantly. So this is perfect. It's healthy and very convenient. I think my favorite is this mac and cheese. It's got 25 grams of protein and 27 different vitamins for mac and cheese. Like, that's unheard of. And with your first order, you actually get free shipping and a Huel t-shirt. So check out Huel, link in the description. So I strapped two of these pistons on either side of my boots. For now, we have an external air supply, but if it works, we can shrink that and put it in the boots or something. Wow. Like, I'm not doing anything. This is all the thing, so. As always, first test is done by our lovely volunteer. Should we put the helmet on him? Yeah. Safety first. He might be a dummy, but he's not stupid. In three, two, one. Nice, fine, he's fine. My turn. <laughs> Do a control jump. It's gonna be a harsh landing. Give me a little pressure. Okay, yeah, we gotta go a little higher. Two more. Oh, I definitely felt a little boost there. So I'm feeling some force, but will it be enough to make up for the added weight of the shoes, plus all the other force we need to jump super high? Also, triggering the boots at the right time is super important for this to work. Oh, I did not time that right. It's definitely a timing thing. And I also think where we mount the pistons onto my feet matters a lot too. I thought that having the pistons on my toes would work because that's where you jump from. But that puts all the force through my ankles, which uh, is not great. So I moved them to my heel because it can take more force. But now it's throwing me forward. Putting them in the middle of my foot under my center of gravity seems to work the best. But there's still the trigger timing issue. It's best to launch right as you approach the peak of your jump. Problem is, if you don't hit that timing just right, bad, bad things happen. A little too early. Too late. It's like getting boosted on a trampoline, you know, too late and you don't go as high, too early and your legs go through your chin. Oh no! With enough pressure, this gets super dangerous. But there is a way to jump high without blowing your legs off where this timing isn't a factor. So this is a teeterboard. It's basically a cursed seesaw used in circuses that launches people like 20 feet in the air. This tells me two things. One, I should not have given up my circus career. And two, it's possible for my legs to take a lot of force if we're in the optimal position. That is, standing up straight with your core tightened. Air rams are a device similar to this used in movies to get those crazy jumps and launches. Um, but they work very similar to the design we're already building. They shoot compressed gas through a massive piston on a lever. With both these devices, the stuntmen aren't using any of their own power to jump. Instead, it's all about bracing themselves to withstand the force and letting the machine do all the heavy lifting. So we need to somehow miniaturize all of that and 
put it into a chute. To do that, we gotta pack as much power into a small form factor as possible, especially because we can't even use our own power to help us assist. It's all gotta come from our shoes. For that, we need to release as much air as possible as fast as possible. So I shrank down the air supply and swapped the smaller pistons and plastic air tubes for straight one inch pipe, which should let in way more air. Test one, new version. I might have made a pipe bomb. I've got about 45 pounds in there. Five times the airflow, this should be insane. Two, one. <laughs> okay, nothing happened. So I'll just take out the weight and then see if it even does anything. Need way more power though. Okay, we have bigger pipes, but now we need more air. So I got a much bigger tank. Wow. That's better. Also, instead of retracting the pistons, I decided to just let them fall out the end. It's simpler, and it makes me a little lighter for some extra height. Now let's add some weight. Fire in the hole. Not bad, but let's jack the pressure even more. So that's about 56 inches, which is well over the record, but we only have half the weight. So again, doubling the air pressure should let us get the same world record height with me in the shoes. So again, I upgraded everything, added two more tanks and a new valve, so now the entire system is rated for 1,000 PSI. You know, just in case. Pressure bottle, release valve. We're now dumping so much air so quickly that it instantly condenses into a cloud. Started off light though, I think it's at like maybe 100 something PSI. Around there. But like 10 pounds in it, just in case it goes really high. Way higher than I thought. <laughs> it shot the ladder over. <laughs> I was like, I'll put 10 pounds there just in case it's like too powerful. I think the best thing to do now is try it on. So I made another one, put it on, and prepared myself to absolutely shatter my theme, this world record. One. Nothing happened. Probably because I'm 10 times the weight. So if we want the same effect, we need 10 times the pressure. All right, a little bit of movement, but I'm noticing a problem. As we add more pressure, the valves are becoming way harder to twist, and the servo motors I'm using to twist the valves aren't strong enough. So in engineering, the second best thing to do is to optimize a part like this and make it work. But the best thing to do is to get rid of that part entirely and still make it work. So I replaced all these complex servos and microcontrollers with a string you pull. All mechanical, way more reliable. Three, two, one. <laughs> wow. You jumped, bro. You jumped. <laughs> No way. How much PSI? 350. How much can this take? 1,000. <laughs> As I jump, one of the pistons fired late. It shot out so fast that it hit the ground, ricochets, and shoots out of frame before I even fall six inches. We need to fix that. Make sure all the pistons fire on the ground at the same time so we don't have any deadly projectiles coming out of our feet. Or... Does that look about right? It went, oh my god, it went through the... Uh, oh, through the table. <laughs> oh god. Oh, buddy. <laughs> this is the most violent Mario thing I've ever seen. <laughs> Usually it's like, bloop, and then it's fine, and I got a coin. We basically have super kicks now, and these things are powerful. I don't know what character shoots things from their feet, but let me know what this reminds you of. Also, if you want to be a superhero, go check out our custom J Laser web shooters that basically turn you into Spider-Man. Just shoot, stick, it automatically reels in and repeat. It's also got custom tips like magnets and suction cups, and it's just a ton of fun and available for purchase on our website right now. Also, did you know there's a pretty cracked looking live action Mario movie from the 90s where they have shoes that look exactly like this? Genuinely did not plan that. Anyways, I redid the whole mechanism, then did blank tests at 500 PSI and even 1000 PSI to make sure all the tanks were firing at the same time. Wow. That was 38 inches. The world record is 47. The world record is we need to be here. We just okay. got here. Just got there. We just need to do another, what, nine inches? Yeah. For the record, do you think it'll work? I need to be like here. 
Okay. Uh, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Pretty high. <laughs> that's crazy. What we got, coach? I, I, that's probably like 44 or 45 would be my guess. Yeah. I mean, or I go like this and that's it. <laughs> oh, dude, you got it! No, I think we were like two inches short, but. Silver medal? A couple more PSI. Though. Don't want to leave any doubt. No doubt. With a record. How did that feel? I felt so high. <laughs> it looked pretty insane. Landing. That's like a lot. That's that, like, was, that was quite that's a bit. High. That was quite high. Jeez. Oh my god. Okay, we need to go there. That's like slightly above the mat. Yeah, I'm doing. Look at that. <laughs> I'm like going so much higher. Easily. Yeah, but see, I didn't even shatter the record. So. Woo! Now we're gonna have some fun with them. Yeah. Finally gonna get this cube, huh? We're coming for you. I can go a little higher than that, right? <laughs> Maybe not. Whatever you think. Woohoo! Oh! Oh! I hit it! You hit it. <laughs> I kind of stuck the landing. Yeah, really. Nothing came out. <laughs> I didn't even get a mushroom. But what's my true max height with these? All right, this is the big one. We're going to see just how high these things can go. Six hundo PSI. Okay. Help my face. Scratch on the chin. Okay, other than that, pretty good. Yeah. Okay. Teeth good. look good. Oh, so, Woo. so glad you put a helmet on. Yeah, I know, me too. Found the limit. Yeah. At this pressure, even with my legs locked and my body tensed, I just can't hold back the force of the pistons and my knees start to buckle. This caused me to flip backwards and lose balance. Thankfully, though, I was wearing body armor all over, plus a helmet, so landing wasn't too bad. Yeah, always wear your helmets, kids. A good lesson there. Fuck, how like, high did I go? Really high, dude. I hit just shy of a six foot vertical, which absolutely shatters the record by over two feet. Like I can confidently say this is the highest vertical jump it will ever do. Honestly, it could be the highest anyone will do with or without super jump shoes. Wow. 